Good day, everybody. Actually, good late afternoon to everybody. I'm out in the garage. I just came out here. Took a few Amazon orders in. One just rolled in and it's our block heater. Look at that. We have lost all our snow. Gone. We're into a major mild spell right now. Very dull. Very dull, misty, damp outside and in the shop here, of course. But uh, hey, at least I'm out of the weather out here in the shop. And uh, we've lost all our snow. Winter has just left us here in Northeast Ontario and uh, it's pretty much washed all the snow away. Everything's gone. We're sitting at three, four, five degrees. Look how damp it is in the shop. Look at the dampness. And that's what you get with an uninsulated, unheated shop. So anyway, that's what you get when you don't have a heated shop. And maybe down the road we'll rectify that. We're looking into different things. But anyway, we got that new block heater today. It just actually came in a couple hours ago. But I've got multiple small projects to get caught up on. Auto cooling solutions, whether that comes from there or not, who knows, but it must. And I just got this tag and it says right here, do not plug the heater in before installation. Dry firing these block heaters will damage the element. So keep that in mind if you get one. I didn't even know that, but. So there is our new block heater. There is our old block heater. So, pretty much all, it's identical heater, really. The only difference I see is this element on this one that come out of the tractor is squished right in, almost touching the side of the nut. And I wondered if that had any effect on its performance of the old heater. The element you can see is squished in. This guy here is much more parallel. So a little bit of a difference there, but they're both 400 watt heaters. So, like I said before, let's check the resistance. Actually, let's check the resistance through the plug first. Last time we were fooling around with a resistance, we got nothing. So let's do a resistance check. Let's get this thing opened up. And hopefully everybody had a good Christmas. Good New Year's coming up. I mean, Every year is a good Christmas for me. At 56 years old, I don't need anything, really. And I'm not looking for nothing. I just want to be healthy and live. Simple. I'm not looking for anything. So, let's do a little check. See what we get for resistance on this puppy. Okay, so there we go. There's the difference right away, you guys, on the new one. Have a look. There is your resistance on the new one right there. Almost 42 ohms on a 400 watt a block heater. And that is that... That is going solely uh, through the terminals and through the cord. So right away, we know we're in good shape. We don't have to take the cord off. We don't know nothing. We got 40, so that gives you 42 ohms of resistance, 400 watt block heater. So we know as of right now that this is a good block heater. So next thing you do, this is identical to the other one, identical. Okay, another thing I noticed about this block heater is I got looking at the box here. And if you look at this block heater, could be just the American laws and the way they're advertising a setup, who knows. But this is a CATS heater, it says right there, K-A-T-S, CATS heater, but it actually says made in USA. Don't know if it's made in USA. Don't know if the box, the label, whatever, who knows. 
you can't trust anything these guys say nowadays. But anyway, cat seeders, it says made in USA. That's all I can tell you right there. So doesn't say made in China. So now got this one off. So now what we're going to do is, like I said, you can either tape this or pipe dope it, whatever you want. And uh, in this case, it really doesn't matter too, too much. Normally, I try not to use Teflon tape or pipe tape on a hydraulic circuit. I don't like those little pieces, and I've seen it before because I pulled valves apart before in heavy industry, and I think all the pipe fitters have seen it before too, and uh, we've all used pipe or dope, and everybody uses Teflon tape for hydraulics or paste, but I have seen this Teflon tape end up migrating through the system. Little bits and chunks and pieces go through your hydraulic circuitry. And depending on how refined your hydraulic circuit is, this stuff can cause you problems, you know. It can get into uh, into uh, small checks inside a valve. It can get into your seat and poppets on your tapered seats on a check or anything like that. And you can actually stop your check valves or anything from completely sealing and they're getting held up by a little piece of tape. There's all kinds of things. You can work these right into the spool of a valve. I've seen this multiple occasions, contamination from Teflon tape. It has its place, mind you, been around a thousand years. So putting Teflon tape on this block heater, not an issue, simply because even if you did lose some migrating Teflon tape, it would only go into your glycol circuit and it would be in the water jacket of the motor and it would be very negligible. It has no effect on it whatsoever. It would just flow around and around in the circuit. But I'm going to get some Loctite pipe dope. Okay. And there you go. All you do is take some of that uh, pipe dope Smear it on that national pipe tap thread. And I like to just take it around. And as you screw it in, as you screw in this NPT fitting, that Teflon paste, that dope, it's going to smear around in those national pipe tap threads. And it's going to get in there and it's going to bind right in there with the threads. As the threads tighten up, that dope, is going to act as your sealant. It's going to get bound right up in there. Because let's face it, once you put this in, it's not coming out again, unless it's defective. So it's not like you're taking it in and out. Now, I'm going to go get set up. I'll get a trouble light set up and we'll quickly put this in. Okay. We're kind of all set up. We got our glycol catch pail down here. And hopefully you guys can see right there. We'll do a bit of a zoom in on that. There's the plug we're taking out right there. And that's gonna be uh, inch and an eight. So, And you'll notice I got the block heater ready to go. And you want to be as quick as you can on this, this thing here. And there we go. We lost very little ethylene glycol. That was like a quick switch. And that's it, man. Just kind of dapple up that ethylene glycol a little, especially, especially if you guys got pets and if you got cats or dogs or anything working with you out in the shop, wipe up that ethylene glycol because they love that 
sweet flavor of that glycol, man, and that'll kill it. That'll kill an animal in a hurry. Ethylene glycol is not a friend of a pet. There have been many animals poisoned with ethylene glycol. And so we got our old plug there. Still reusable. We'll put this back on the shelf. And if you look, that's how much glycol I've lost. Mind you, I lost some on the cardboard, but I lost virtually no glycol. Just a few quick drops. And I did top it up last time, but I lost hardly nothing. And like I said, very important to clean up your, uh, that ethylene glycol that spills. Like, really be on that when it comes to, uh, especially for you guys. And like myself, you got dogs that come in the shop and they lay around beside you or work beside you. Clean up that glycol. That shit is not good. I can't stress that enough how important that is. Okay. I just want to make sure that this, I'm going to get a screwdriver. I just want to make sure that the, uh, the plug, don't jam it in. Just dabble it around that rag. I just want to make sure it's clean and dry in there. And that's it. And then there, that's it. And that's really all there is to it. And then now we're going to plug it in. I got an extension cord over here. Let's take, and we'll see if we can hear that. You should be, you should be able to hear that block heater bubbling when we plug that thing in. So I'm going to plug it in and then we're going to listen. I did hear one little crackle, and plus I'm going to feel it. Oh yeah. Instant. I can feel that right away. I can't hear it that good though. Maybe because it's only 400 watts. But I did hear a slight, slight crackle. And I feel that right away. This whole casting right here where my finger is, that's warm. That's already warm. That's how quick that's warming up right now. Perfect. All right. So I brought the extension cord over anyway, as you guys see. I plugged it in. I'm going to leave that thing to do some burn time on here. And, uh, and then find your place, best place to wrap that cord. And on no sharp edges with that cord. When you wrap it, make sure on your loader frame or anywhere else, Keep it off those sharp edges. And uh, that's it for the block heater. Quick install. Like we've seen, it was like 42 ohms on a 400 watt heater. And uh, I think that's probably like 80 bucks later, we got a new block heater. But remember this, when you do it yourself, you're probably shaving off at least one hour's labor off a dealer cost of 110 to 120 bucks an hour. So that, Probably would have cost you between two and 250 bucks to have a block heater put in your tractor at a dealer, which is fine. Like I said, they have to eat too, but if you can do it yourself, there you go. Not a big deal, and uh, it's already in. Okay, you guys, thanks for tuning in. We got that in, and uh, we got some uh, chainsaw work to do next. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again.